Well, good morning. I'm Ed, Ed Pence, Executive Director of Crossref. I'm very happy to welcome you today. Uh, this is the uh, 15th uh, Crossref uh, annual, annual meeting. Just a few uh, housekeeping things. Uh, we do have uh, uh, Wi-Fi. The uh, login is here on these cards. We also have a, a Twitter hashtag, Crossref14, so please feel free to, uh, uh, to tweet uh, today. Um, the full meeting is being uh, recorded and uh, streamed. Uh, we will have time for questions. Uh, so when you're asking a question, we, we have a couple of microphones, so we ask that you use the microphone so that gets picked up for the, for the recording and uh, streaming. Uh, breaks and lunch will be out uh, just in the rooms uh, where you came in uh, uh, this morning. And um, uh, we are going to be sending out uh, an electronic, electronic feedback form by email. So uh, it would be very, very useful uh, for you to, uh, to fill that in. Uh, because we do um, uh, take a look at those and, uh, and uh, they uh, can have an impact on what we do uh, the, the following, following year. Okay, so um, some of you are here for our corporate annual meeting uh, this morning, uh, but for those of you who, who weren't, I just wanted to uh, highlight um, the, uh, the board. Uh, it's very important. Um, uh, to have a board, and uh, we have a very engaged and, and active board uh, that's made up of uh, member member publishers. It's a 16 member uh, board of directors, and um, the way Crossref is set up, uh, organizations hold the board seats, but then of course the people who then uh, fill those uh, seats and uh, participate in uh, uh, guiding uh, Crossref uh, is very important. So we have uh, uh, our chair and uh, treasurer. Uh, who are both both here today? Uh, this is a list of the uh, uh, current board members. Uh, you can see it's a, a, a good range of, of the industry, many many types of organizations, uh, and I just want to highlight uh, all their contribution and everything that they do for uh, uh, for Crossref. And in particular, uh, a big welcome to uh, two uh, new board members, Eleonora and Helen, and um, uh, they represent. Um, our international growth, as well as growth in um, uh, smaller publishers, uh, smaller publishers as as well. Uh, and I did also want to say a big thank you uh, to uh, our departing board members, uh, uh, Miranda Walker from from Informs and uh, Rick Lee from World Scientific uh, uh, Publishing, who've completed their uh, completed their terms uh, for Crossref. So, uh, moving on to give a little update uh, for, for Crossref. So, I was kind of thinking about uh, uh, what it means to be uh, 15. And uh, some of you may remember from, I think it was 2010, uh, I was talking about uh, Crossref at that age being a, a tween, uh, a, a pre-tween and what that meant. So, uh, before I get to that, sorry, uh, just to talk about the, uh, uh, the financials, uh, Bernie Rouse, our treasurer, presented these this morning. But just if you, in case you missed that, I just wanted to highlight this one, uh, this one slide, um, and uh, this just highlights here in yellow. This is the the operating uh, income, the uh, the surplus, and uh, we have on the top here total revenues, which we see are are going up, and uh, will will be just over six million uh, expenses here. Uh, uh, below that, those have also been uh, going up, but they're below uh, the revenues. So uh, since uh, uh, 2002, uh, we've skipped a few years there just to fit things in. Uh, we've, we've had a surplus. It's been, in, been going up um, slightly. But uh, uh, we've also, as Bernie mentioned, uh, been establishing a, a cash reserve and um, uh, having prudent financial management to, to keep Crossref a, a sustainable uh, organization. And I think that um, uh, our uh, founding uh, treasurer, uh, Peter Bowman, is here today. So uh, he got us through these uh, tough first few years uh, when there wasn't a surplus. And, uh, uh, but now we've, we've been on a, a good trajectory uh, uh, since, since then. But back to my theme about being 15, uh, Crossref is now uh, a, a teenager. <coughs> Teenage years can, uh, can, can be difficult. Um, but uh, I'm going to come back to this a little bit because uh, I, I picked this up 
uh, online. It's uh, being a teenager is also called middle adolescent. And uh, it's described as the time when teens become better able to set goals and think about their future. So I think that's very true for, uh, for, for Crossref. And their ability to think abstractly continues to increase. And they often begin thinking about the meaning of life. And I think that's also true to some extent for Crossref. You know, uh, it's been 15 years and we're rethinking some things. And we'll talk about that uh, this morning. So you'll be hearing a, a lot more about that. But just on to uh, some statistics, uh, Crossref content, uh, there's lots of content. It's been, it's been growing, and we've just passed the milestone of 70 million, uh, 70 million items. And uh, you know, I think that's a, a great achievement. And you can just see from the early years, it's just been a, re a really, really steady growth. So I think that's, uh, that's fantastic. Uh, the type of content and the, our content mix has, has, been, has been changing. So, uh, of course, journals uh, dominate, so 54.6 million uh, journal articles. Um, next, we have uh, books, 8.8 .8 million uh, book DOIs, so uh, chapters as well as uh, book, book titles. Um, and then the next one is uh, conference proceedings, articles, 3.8 3 million. And then we're getting into uh, the, some of the smaller ones, but which these areas are growing very, very quickly. And so we have components, and we haven't really highlighted that before, but um, uh, components are figures, chapters, tables within an article that are, are identified separately. So publishers are starting to uh, uh, identify the, the parts of articles or chapters uh, separately, and that's, and that's growing. Uh, then we have uh, database uh, records here uh, at just... Uh, close, close to a million, and then um, uh, technical reports and uh, standards here. So standards has been something uh, very recent. We've been working with uh, ASTM and BSI and some other organizations on updating the system, and so we're going to be seeing the, the number of standards in the system increasing uh, rapidly over the, over the next year. And then just to give you uh, the percentage breakdowns, uh, in the past, you know, journals have been, you know, 80-some percent, 85 percent. Uh, so that as a percentage, they've been dropping. Books, books have been increasing. I think conferences are, are staying steady, but you can see here then uh, some, of the, some of the smaller categories. But the, uh, the mix is changing, so we should see that uh, continue over the, next, uh, over the next few years. So looking at the trends with uh, journals, we've seen very, very steady growth with uh, uh, current journal articles. And... Uh, uh, the membership is growing, the amount of content getting published is, is growing, so that's, that's led to just a, a, a very steady increase year to year. Backfiles uh, is a little bit of a different story, because obviously, as you'd expect, uh, when publishers uh, get going and some of the bigger publishers digitize all their backfiles, that means we've got a lot of backfiles coming in, but we saw a drop uh, in 2012 and then uh, a little bit in 2013, but it's, it's actually leveled off a little bit, the decline is leveled off a little bit, so uh, we're keeping an eye on, uh, on, on that trend. Uh, in books, you can see that uh, books have been uh, increasing uh, as well, and uh, uh, more uh, precipitous drop-off in uh, book, uh, book back files, um, uh, book back files as well. But, over, but overall, it just means a huge amount of content that's now included in uh, the Crossref linking network. Uh, we passed another uh, milestone last year where, uh, in terms of the clicks, uh, DOI resolutions, people clicking on DOIs, that's uh, over a million, uh, over a billion, sorry, clicks uh, last, last year and, and this year uh, we should be at over uh, 1.1 billion. And so I think that represents uh, a great achievement and uh, that means, uh, you know, researchers, and, and others who are, it's, it's easier to, uh, to navigate the content online and uh, uh, benefiting scholarly communications. And as a secondary effect, obviously bringing traffic to uh, content, to publishers, to publishers' content. And uh, so we try to, there's a lot of machine activity and crawler activity on the web as well, and uh, machines and crawlers follow DOIs, but uh, we try to weed that out as much as possible. So this 1.1 billion is weeding out actually a huge amount of crawling that we can that we can identify that's actually uh, 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 machine machine based in terms of membership we're still seeing 20% growth year on year uh, in the number of members 
we now have uh, over 5,300 participating organizations from, from all over the world and uh, uh, many, many libraries too, also using the, the, the Crossref uh, system. So I think uh, one of the things uh, to highlight now is that obviously over the years we've, we've developed a lot of new services. We start with our basic uh, reference linking and, and, and cited by linking. And uh, Crossref Metadata Services, which is about delivering uh, uh, metadata, uh, plagiarism screening, update identification with uh, Crossmark, and um, Fundref, as well, which you're all familiar with, I'm sure, and uh, the, le the latest uh, service, which is Crossref uh, Text and Data Mining. Um, uh, and you can see that uh, we've actually built up quite a lot of services, but also quite a lot of names and quite a lot of logos. And so um, this prompted us a while ago to take a, take a look at our, our branding and do a, do a, do a brand uh, analysis. And so that work has been uh, going on and um, uh, we're going to hear about it a little bit later this later this morning, but uh, you know we're collecting lots of different information, and we need to clarify and simplify uh, the branding and uh, how we name our services. So, as a uh, good teenager, we're rethinking our identity. Uh, so, the the brand review has led to creating uh, points of distinction, as they're called, which are the things that are unique about Crossref, uh, a consistent way for naming our our, our services using Crossref as, as the master brand, and we're underway with uh, a, a, an overhaul of, uh, of the website and, and how we uh, represent ourselves uh, to the world. And uh, there'll be a little bit more on that uh, later this morning, but I think that's a really, really big uh, development. So we're reaching out to new, new groups, and um, we've made a, a number of announcements recently that I think are very important, uh, one of them being uh, with PKP, the Public Knowledge uh, Project. Uh, who developed the uh, OJS system, uh, the Open Journal Systems, um, we announced uh, an OJS Crossref plugin. So Crossref staff, Carl Ward from Crossref, uh, worked very closely with uh, the OJS PKP folks, and there's now a plugin that, that automates deposits uh, to Crossref. And this is very important because um, we were quite surprised to see that uh, 400 Crossref members use OJS and overall, OJS uh, estimates that there are about 7,000 journals globally that use the OJS system. So, so this is really important to enable small international publishers without technical skills uh, to fully engage with Crossref. And this is going to um, this plugin at the moment covers the basics, but it's going to expand in the future to also cover um, uh, Fundref and licensing information and all the other all the other Crossref uh, services. So in terms of uh, new skills and new services, continuing with the theme of uh, helping, helping small publishers, um, we are uh, just rolling out the Crossref Depositor. Uh, this is based on some technology we've been using for a while, which uh, uh, PDFX, which extracts uh, reference lists from uh, PDFs. So what this enables is uh, facilitates the deposit linking and display of citations. So a smaller publisher can uh, just upload the PDF, and then that extracts the references and automatically does all the work for them, even to the point of, of being able to display um, uh, linked references uh, on, on landing pages. Uh, so as I said, we're going to be rolling that out starting, starting, from, uh, starting from next uh, week, and I think that's going to really um, uh, help smaller publishers, but also uh, for many publishers who have only PDF, full-text PDF, uh, it'll enable them to link their references, which is one of the key aspects, one of the key obligations of, of, of Crossref, Crossref membership. So following on the theme of the uh, collaborations we've, we've developed, uh, we've been working for, uh, for many years uh, with, with INASP, with the Journals Online program, uh, and uh, we also uh, uh, announced, had a, different, a separate announcement with PKP, uh, about uh, being what we call a, a, a sponsoring entity. So both with INASP and PKP, uh, um, uh, we are waiving deposit fees for publishers from low and lower middle income countries who join Crossref uh, via INASP and now also uh, PKP. So again, extending uh, the reach and uh, opening Crossref up to, uh, uh, to new, t new types of publishers all, all over the world. And then on with sponsoring entities, we also have a program where we now have 20 different organizations 
around the world who are effectively Crossref agents. They're our partners. We, we, we work with them. Um, one of the original ones was uh, JST in Japan with the JSTAGE system. But these uh, 20 sponsors now represent 500 organizations. So that's important uh, as we uh, uh, grow because uh, the sponsoring entity streamlines uh, and helps with administration and technical support, and they can be a local partner for, for these members. Uh, so we're trying to develop uh, these sponsors as, as, as much as we can. We also uh, announced uh, a collaboration with CDL, the California uh, Digital Library. Uh, and uh, California Digital Library works, uh, obviously, with, with uh, libraries, but they have an easy ID digital identifier service, which also incorporates data site DOIs. Uh, and, uh, but they'll now also be offering Crossref services. So this really connects into the community where libraries are, are becoming, uh, becoming publishers, and, the, and then they, it makes it easier for them to join, uh, for, to join uh, Crossref. Very importantly, out on the front desk uh, just on Monday, we announced uh, uh, a collaboration with, uh, between Crossref and, and Datasite. Uh, we're going to accelerate the adoption of DOIs uh, for data publication and citation. Um, this is very uh, exciting. Uh, one of the key benefits will be support for interlinking between articles and, and data. Data is uh, very, very big at the moment, and it's going to be some uh, technical integration and, and other things. And um, I'm happy to say also that Adam Farfar, who's chair of uh, Datasite board, is here today. So. Um, uh, yeah, this is, this is uh, going to lead to a lot of uh, good things over the next, uh, the next year. Crossref metadata is driving other industry initiatives. Um, Chorus and Share are making use of Crossref metadata to, uh, to enable, uh, to enable their, their services. And uh, we are very engaged with ORCID as well, the researcher IDs. Um, I'm going to be talking about this a little bit uh, later this morning. Uh, but just to say, ORCID is uh, within the next uh, 24 hours or so should surpass 1 million uh, registrations, 1 million claimed uh, researcher IDs, which I think is a uh, really important uh, milestone. So this couldn't all this couldn't happen at all uh, without the the, the Crossref uh, staff. So um, I just wanted to uh, thank the Crossref staff for for everything they do and just highlight the the staff that we've had uh, join uh, this year, a couple in the U.S. and, uh, uh, and one uh, in the U.K. And as uh, Bernie highlighted this morning with, with the budget, uh, we're going to be growing more uh, next year. We've got a lot of things uh, that we're doing. Uh, and so we're going to be expanding and adding um, a, a few people over the next uh, year as well. Uh, we're currently at uh, 20, 25 staff, and uh, next year that should be going up uh, to 28 or so. So on that uh, score, I wanted to just show this. I've shown this in, in the past. Uh, this may be the last time that you, that you see this logo uh, because we're going to be, uh, going to be rebranding. Re but I think it uh, uh, captures the um, uh, benefits of Crossref and the network effects uh, and the positive impact that we're having on, on scholarly uh, communications. So uh, that's uh, it for me. Uh, thank you very much.